Welcome. I'm Diane Marie Collins, and today I'm visiting with Wayne Coburn, President and CEO of iTech Medical. Welcome, Wayne. Thanks, Diane. It's great to be here. Thank you. Um, let's start with, tell me a little bit about your background and exactly how did you get involved with iTech Medical? Sure. Um, my background is in the investment industry. I worked in the investment industry for about 10, 11 years. Um, while I was there, I got involved in uh, helping to raise money for smaller companies to help them move their business forward. Um, with a particular focus in the healthcare field. Uh, in uh, 1995, I joined a biotechnology company and I was there for five years and I've been in the medical device business, medical technology now since about early 2000. And so was the flow into iTech Medical a natural process? Or? Actually, it was, it was a very natural process. Um, I was introduced to the, uh, actually to the people that discovered the original NPR technology down in, uh, down in Southern California back in the early to mid 90s and I had an opportunity to go down and to meet the inventors and to actually have the test done on me and at the time I had had a back injury and I didn't tell them and they were able to pick it up and so oh. I was impressed. Um, I put some of my own money into the company and I helped to raise uh, quite a few million dollars for the company, brought in friends, family and some institutional <laughs> investors and uh, was able to move that business forward. I got on to the board of directors of that company uh, in uh, 95 and, and always stayed very very close to um, to the technology and to a lot of the people that were involved in the early stages. Um, in 2003, we set up iTech Medical and actually a lot of the people that were involved in some of the early development, we brought on as part of our uh, management team, focusing on those people that actually had experience in, uh, in developing medical technologies. Uh, we brought together a very strong board of directors and a very, very strong uh, medical advisory board. We've raised some money and uh, you know, here we are today. Tell me about NPR and exactly how you plan to introduce it into the marketplace. Uh, well, NPR, first of all, NPR stands for Muscle Pattern Recognition, and it's the core technology that we're developing at this point in time. Um, right now, the NPR system is a, a, a diagnostic tool that healthcare workers, physicians, can use to help better diagnose uh, soft tissue injuries of the back and the neck for those patients that have back, back and neck pain. Uh, the, uh, the technology was originally developed, like the early, early technology was originally developed down in uh, Southern California at the University of California. And uh, we acquired the technology in 2003. And at the time we established iTech Medical, we knew that to get the product into the marketplace, we had to have an experienced management team, people that had taken a product from early stage development into full commercialization. And so that's how we brought together our, our management team and, and our advisory board. And so, uh, you know, people, people have often said, well, you're in a very complicated field having to deal with the FDA, but in a way it helps us because it's so highly regulated that it's very clear the route that you have to take from, from where we were several years ago to where we expect to be within the next 12 months, and that is through the commercialization. And so it's, it's almost as if they give you a roadmap on how, to, on how to get from point A to point B, if you will. So um, our plan is to follow the roadmap and to work with people that have uh, taken the road before. Okay, so you mentioned now this back pain market, it's an, a large one. Mm -hmm. How exactly on this roadmap are you going to get the small company like iTech Medical to gain access to North America and, and possibly beyond maybe Europe and mm -hmm. even the Far East? Well, there's a lot of things that we can do as a small company to help better position ourselves to enter into partnerships that will allow us to really expand this thing globally because as you know back pain isn't specific to to the United States and North America it's a, <laughs> it's, a it's a global pro problem <laughs> and to expect to be able to do it on our own would be would be crazy um, what we're going to do and what we are doing is that we are going through uh, a series of uh, of independent clinical studies and we will be filing with FDA uh, to obtain the clearances that we need to get the product into the marketplace but there's a number of things that we have to do not only along the way, but once we've attained the, the clearances from the FDA to attract those types of lar large partners, corporate partners, that will allow us to sort of, if you will, I mean, the, they call it the hockey stick growth, but where you, you go along this way, and then all of a sudden you start to go this way. Um, completing the clinical trials is by far the most important thing at, at this point in time. We have to depend, uh, demonstrate rather independently that the system works. That, uh, uh, that study will then lead to uh, publications in peer-reviewed journals, which physicians that, uh, that deal with patients that uh, would be ideal candidates for NPR will read, and that's how they start to learn about it. Um, we'll have to establish the test in a number of 
key sites, um, high volume sites where they see a lot of people with back pain. And we also have, uh, we'll have some additional studies that we will do, um, a lot less time consuming than the one that we're doing right now. Uh, and we can actually do them with customers, but they will generate uh, specific economic data that will then help us lead towards uh, resolving the issue having to do with reimbursement. So, you know, I, I'm trying to sort of capsulize in just a, in, in a few points, but we pull all these things together, that puts us in a much better position to go to much larger companies to partner to uh, introduce the product not only locally, but also in foreign markets as well. Okay, so it is indeed a global Absolutely. And that takes me to what are some of the financial opportunities with your company? Um, briefly, just describe the business model. Um, well, before I come to the business model, why don't I talk a bit about the, uh, the, the market and the market size and, uh, and, and, and the opportunity for us as a company. Sounds good. Um, back, pain, back pain is probably the most uh, common reason, I think, other than the common cold that people go to the doctors. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. I've had it. You've probably had it. Um, most of the people in our company have had it. And it's, it's a real tough, when you're dealing with soft tissue injury, it's a very, very tough thing to diagnose. And so um, the result is, is that a lot of people are misdiagnosed and they'll miss work. And they'll have a lot of diagnostic tests done that perhaps might be unnecessary. They may be put onto rehab that is based on the inaccurate diagnosis. And you start to add up all these costs and it, get, it becomes a very, very expensive problem. And it, it, you, know, you can look on the internet, and I think the lowest number that I've seen is that the annual uh, uh, direct and indirect cost for back pain is something like $50 billion, and I've seen as high as $150, $200 billion. And so somewhere in there is the size of our market, and that's just in the North American market. You look at the European market, and it's probably a similar size. Mm. And so, again, uh, you know, we talked about doing this alone. We're going to be doing this, obviously, with partners, people that have experience in introducing the new technologies. But the, um, our business model is actually based not on uh, selling the equipment, but participating on a per test basis. What we've established is a recurring revenue model. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like selling a license for software, if you will. I mean, it's obviously a little bit more complicated than that. But uh, the idea is to remove the barriers to entry. We don't want to be out selling, necessarily selling the equipment where the budgets may not exist for that type of equipment. Whereas if we can do it on a much smaller participating basis, um, it proves very economical for the company and it proves very economical for us. What do the next 6, 12, 24 months look like for you? How and where are you focusing your efforts? Well, for the next six months, we're focusing our efforts on um, doing some clinical studies uh, in Utah. We're going to be expanding into California and possibly Michigan to prepare the work that we need for our first FDA filing. We're hoping to have that done within the next six months. Um, the following six months, we'll be doing our independent clinical study, which will likely be carried out in the same areas, in the same sites, but we may be expanding it to, uh, to two or three other hospitals as well too. And the idea f during that six month period is to independently document the effectiveness of the NPR system looking at these strain sprain type injuries. The following 12 months is really when we do the commercialization. And uh, initially, we're, we're going to be starting in Europe. And if I can backtrack a little bit, uh, we're actually going to be starting uh, that work in our second six-month period while we're doing the clinical study in North America. Um, it will give us an opportunity to really test the system in a, in a, in a real-world environment over there while we're still doing the independent clinical study in North America. It will also let us to sort of build up a little bit of momentum so that once the independent clinical study is done, we will have effectively launched in Europe. So going at six months, 12 months, at the end of 12 months, once we've completed the independent clinical study, we'll be taking the results and we'll be submitting them for publication into peer review journals for physicians to read about, uh, to learn about the system. Um, we will also be making a second filing with FDA to expand the marketing claims of, uh, of our system, of the NPR system. And um, then we plan on rolling it out. Excellent. Well, thank you, Wayne, for spending some time with me. Well, thank me. you very much, Jim. I've enjoyed it. Thank you.